to K or not to K? That is the question. That's also the corniest I've ever been on this channel, so enjoy the moment. Today, uh, in this video, I am going to discuss the K rule. Now, I don't know if you've heard of the K rule before, um, but it's something that uh, you may see come up occasionally in discussion between professional colorists on social media, uh, where they're talking about the K rule on it, and if it's um, something you need to pay attention to, or if it's a um, antiquated rule that you don't need to care about anymore, you know, etc. Um, but in this video, I'm going to first of all tell you what the K rule is and tell you why um, my take on it and uh, whether or not I think you should uh, be thinking about it when you do your colors. All right, so the K rule is actually something that I was taught when I first learned to color, you know, in the you know, first few years of this century, um, which basically was the rule is uh, to have zero or very little K or black in your CMYK values of your colors. And if you notice over here in my palettes here, if I go through and you look at the CMYK values, you notice a lot of these colors have zero K um, simply because they come from that era when I still worked in CMYK and uh, was adhering to that K rule. Now, um, does it matter if you have K? Well, it depends. Um, and I'm going to do a little demonstration to demonstrate how that K rule could come into effect. Um, so, Let's get started with that. So I'm going to create two new documents here. Seven by seven, just a perfect square. There's one file new. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so I got two. There you go. Um, there you go. So I got two documents here. I am going to go Windows, Arrange, to a vertical. All right, let's get them to fit the thing. All right, actually, I guess that's how they're going to be. Um, all right, so I have two documents open, and I'm going to, let's see, make sure I select on the first one, and this first one, I am going to convert to profile, and this is going to kind of tie in with my last video where I was talking about color spaces. Um, so this color space, I'm going to uh, have it in my CMYK working space. Say OK. And then on the second one, actually hold on, just to make sure we keep track of these, I am going to save this as CMYK. Now let's make this a Photoshop document. There we go. And the second one, I'm going to save as RG, oop, RGB. Photoshop. All right, just to keep track of it. Okay, and then this one over here, I'm going to make sure, convert to profile. And just make sure it's in WRGB 1998. All right, so now I got two identical files open, one CMYK, one RGB. Um, and actually, this RGB one, I'm going to proof, turn on CMYK. So now it should be converting, um, you know, previewing the colors I put down to look very similar to this, or actually identical to that. If it goes if it goes correctly um, so I'm going to select this kind of like a dark orangey brown up here which you'll notice has a relatively high K it's 47 um, 
and I am going to fill, fill, okay, and uh, let's see, I'm going to open, I'm going to go underneath window, go down to info, I'm going to have this palette open and I am going to do my panel options. I'm going to change that one to total ink. Right, so now this first panel here, when I put my cursor over it, it will show on an open file, it'll show the total ink. So actually it's slightly different, you know, so this one's 259, that's 258, close enough. Um, but the ink limit, uh, as I mentioned, you know, which I mentioned you know, roughly in my last video, um, is important to pay attention to uh, because depending on the printer, uh, it's going to require a different ink limit. Um, like I said, Marvel requires a relatively high ink limit of 300, which is what we're going to be going by today in this demonstration. And basically, um, that ink limit is just the total amount of ink that the printer and the paper that's going to be printed on um, can handle. If it goes above that, then it can cause problems and start causing uh, printing errors and gunk up the printer. So you don't want to go above the uh, total required ink limit. And in the case of this demonstration, that's going to be 300%. So uh, I'm going to go to gradient. Uh, yep, um, it's already set to multiply, and I am going to, first over on the CMYK side, I am going to um, do a gradient, and I'm going to do it a couple of times, really quick, there. So now at the top I get a very dark color, and basically I'm just built, you know, using multiply to build up my darks on this color, using this, using the same color multiplied upon itself. Now I'm going to do the same thing over in the RGB. There. So now, you know, side by side, they are, um, they have very similar appearances. And if I take the cursor up to the top, you look at the ink limit. And you'll notice my, like on this side, it's showing 299 because I'm working on RGB. And I have the CMYK profile, which we, you know, previewing, which is going to restrict the ink limit. So that's 299. That's still one percent below the total ink or the total maximum ink limit of 300. Now I go over to the CMYK, which looks identical, but I, I go to the top and look at that ink limit. That is 385, which is way higher than what um, than what you need, and that'll be a problem. And just to put the point home, I am going to convert the RGB one into the profile. Because you see, uh, this 300%, that restricts uh, the ink limit, but that only works when you're converting. So if you're working directly in CMYK, this ink limit has no effect. So I am going to convert there. And yep, still, the total ink limit is 299. And over in the CMYK, it's 385, and yet the colors look identical, but this will print, this will cause problems. So um, basically, what this means is uh, the K rule, and how this applies to the K rule is, um, by, if you avoid your base colors um, with any K in it, you never have to worry about, like if you're using multiply to build up darks, you would never have to worry about uh, it becoming too dark in the K if you don't have any K. And and you would basically would only end up with a maximum 100% cyan, 100% magenta, 100% yellow, which is only 300%, which would still be within the, um, um, within the ink limit set here um, but so so basically in my opinion that's what the K rule is about um, is simply preventing going over the total ink limit uh, and you really don't have to worry about that if you're working directly in CMYK 
if you're working in RGB, like I said, you can set the ink limit, and that way when you convert, you'll still preserve the color, but it will choose, um, it'll choose an ink combination that is within your um, ink limit. Uh, so when you're working in RGB, you don't have to worry about the K rule. Uh, if you're working in CMYK, then you probably should keep the K rule in mind. Um, or just be very careful that you don't exceed whatever the ink limit is. And it, like I said, with 300, it's pretty easy because if you don't have any K, uh, you know, you'll never exceed 300. But if you have like a lower ink limit that you're trying to stay in like 280 or even 240 if you're working on a newsprint, um, then you, you have to pay even closer attention to it that you don't go over um, that ink limit. So uh, that you know breaks down the uh, the K rule, and I hope that makes sense to everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave it in the comments, um, and I'll try to get back to it as soon as I can. And uh, until then, I'll see you on the next video.